Hi, this is Neil from MasterPaintingNow.com and in this video I'm going to walk you through or talk you through this painting here. It's part of my um, symbolism figure collection. This is the one I'll be showing how to do. Done with Golden Open Acrylics using a Filbert, Winston & Newton Filbert number 6 Winton. Here's a digital version I did as well. I, I hate doing the same thing twice. I always do something a little different when I do different versions. All right, so let's get started. So first thing, I have a sketch laid out. And the paintbrush I'm using, uh, the Winston & Newton Filbert number no. six, is uh, pretty stiff. You know, it's got nice, nice stiff. It's not it's not super soft. It's uh, nice. I like that for, for painting, especially acrylics. Um, I also like using hog bristles, by the way, even though they're typically not for Acrylics, I like them. Just wash them out good and rinse them, dry them, and they're, they'll last a long time. So I have a sketch that I start with. I actually use a, sometimes I use a projection if it's really complicated. And uh, here's the three colors. I mix them together. And the three colors is uh, titanium white. This is, again, golden opens. The reason I like golden opens is they stay open longer, meaning they stay wet longer on the canvas. I also use the Golden Open um, medium instead of water to paint with because and to mix with and stuff because it keeps it wet longer. So it allows you to do more oil-like techniques. I can even do Bob Ross uh, techniques with these paints. Um, the colors I'm using, like I said, is titanium white, Prussian blue, and uh, one of the blacks. Hold on, I actually have the website up here. It is, oh yeah, Payne's Gray. I like Payne's Gray because it has kind of a bluish color too. If you want just pure black, bone black is here. But I really like this a lot. Uh, later on, I add a little bit of burnt umber to just kind of change it up a little bit. Actually, I don't, wait, could you even see all those? Oh, hold on. Yeah, so sorry. Payne's Gray, burnt umber, titanium white, and Prussian blue. So after I have my paints all mixed up, I like to bundle it together uh, using, these are different brushes I like to use. Um, most of the ones I like are Filberts. That's actually a big one for the background. I, th this, I can't remember what brand this is, but it's basically a stiffer brush too. It's similar to the Winston & Newton. And so I start, I'll play some of this in real time. So I start by laying down a base color. I recommend doing this. It gives your other paint something to stick to, like do some sort of underpainting. It also makes it where you don't lose your sketch, so you kind of have the general idea of where the sketch is and where you're going. Um, yeah, so I like to make sure I really get into all the all the teeth of the canvas to really, you know, make sure there's no, no canvas showing through that way. When I start doing my other layers, I don't have to do them as thick if I don't want to because this will show through underneath. And again, mix it with some medium. I like to mix it with medium instead of water. That way it goes longer, but you can do both. And here sometimes I'll even mix with water just because I don't mind sometimes if this dries, but I actually like it usually if it doesn't dry. So let's go and kind of speed this up here so we can, because it's basically just block, I'm just blocking in. And I kind of like this blue color. Um, I want it, you know, I kind of usually do a kind of a color that I think is going to, here's the uh, golden open. It's called a gloss glazing liquid. This really helps it. Uh, one, it adds, it adds a nice gloss to it. makes it look more like oil paints, but it also makes it stay wet longer. And then for the skin, I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber to this mixture just to kind of change it up a little bit. So that way I have kind of a warmer, warmer color. I'll show some of this in real time just so you can kind of see. I believe I switched to a smaller brush. Um, this might be even smaller than a six. Yeah, it looks smaller than a six, maybe a four. Still using a filbert. I don't want to, I don't want a lot of details, so I'm not going to use really small brushes. I'm not going to use little round brushes or rigger brushes or anything like that. I, I like to paint more of a impressionistic style. An easy way to do that is just use larger filbert brushes for everything and uh, it forces you to have to try to make details with a couple of brush strokes and it adds more of that impressionistic look. 
And so this isn't, um, again, this is just all underpainting right now. So we're just, I'm just trying to get a sense of the shadows and things. I'm going to kind of go a little bit more faster through this because this year, like I said, it's just the underpainting. Give me a general sense of where I'm going. And I have some shadows and stuff, some shapes, so I don't lose my sketch underneath. And I'm painting the edges and stuff which we don't need to see. So yeah, there we go. And here you can, you can work wet on wet if you want to. Um, I'm actually using a blow dryer. That's what's really good about golden opens too, is you can, so that you can get the benefit of both. You know, you can dry them out pretty fast. You can dry it only halfway so it's tacky. You can dry it all the way so that it's nice and dry and the new paint sticks on well. Uh, or you can leave it kind of wet and do more of a wet on wet kind of technique with oils. So Golden Opens are really cool. They, they have a lot of um, you know versatility that way. I like to uh, let me get rid of the sound here. Yeah, I like I like to uh, to work with these paints. They're really nice, and they're not really really expensive either. They last a pretty long time. You don't need much. So now I'm just starting to lay in some tone, right? So I, I use it really lightly with some glazing. So I'm almost like just kind of glazing over this. What this will do is it won't it, it won't uh, cover up, right? It's more transparent, so it's not going to cover up the underpainting. It's going to just glaze it. It's going to change the color of the underpainting but it's going to keep all those forms that I had. And, and for this reason, you want to dry it when you do this kind of technique. And so you can quickly glaze, right? All in one setting. You can do this really cool, um, you know, if you're working with oils, you can't do that. You have to wait quite a while, you know, for them to dry enough so you can actually glaze. With these, just hit it with a blow dryer, bam, you're glazing away. All right, so I glaze all this with a little bit of red. I added another layer of red to him because I want him to look like a demon. And now I'm coming in with a little bit thicker paint, right? I'm laying it on a little bit thicker. And so here's, I forget what color this is. I think it's crimson or something. I think I show it there. Yeah, crimson. This is, uh, adds that more kind of a almost purplish color to it. So I'm adding a bunch of different colors here. Uh, I think I got more red, I don't know what red that is, might be crimson again, burnt umber, uh, titanium white, some golden open stuff there. I don't know what kind of green that is. It's like a pretty bright green. And let's see here, do I, I'm going to see if I actually show how I do the, uh, the flesh tone. So you see, I use white, I, I, I for white, I use so much white. I usually buy this big thing right here. And you just scoop it out with a knife, titanium white. It just a lot, lot cause you end up using a lot of white. So, so here we're going to add white. We're going to add, uh, I think I'm using not crimson red for skin. I, you can use crimson red though. It makes a nice, like warmer skin tone. So I think I might actually use it this time. Maybe I'm not sure. I can't remember actually. Um, usually I add a little bit of burnt umber. Uh, I couldn't really see what I did there. But anyway, typically what I do with skin tones is I'm gonna go ahead and is I'll add a little bit, uh, mostly white, but you want to add a little bit of yellow. And that was, that might be yellow, it might just be looking weird on the camera. Um, but I usually use like a um, an ochre, so yellow ochre for so ochre white, a little bit of burnt umber if you want to darken up a little bit and tone it down, and then uh, a little bit of red. Can use any kind of red you want really it's not you know each each using different reds is try different reds it'll actually give you slightly different skin tones which is nice uh, a little bit of red and just a tiny tiny bit of blue to kind of tone it down so it's not so bright like i said you can also use burnt umber to kind of tone it down but so now i'm just kind of blocking in this basic skin tone here and i'm adding a little bit of violet uh, some sort of violet purplish color here just to kind of warm up the skin tones. 
And here, I'm going to show some of that right there in real time. Just you can kind of see, I, you know, everyone paints different as far as like how you do your brush strokes. And so this is a pretty um, soft painting. I'm not, I'm not trying to leave a bunch of individual brush strokes on there, but you can, you know, it's all up to you how, like how you want to do it. And what's good about this, you can get this kind of oil. Look at that, how it blends right into that. I just add a little bit of white onto it to kind of highlight it and I can blend it out. Look at that blending on the canvas, just like oils. I love that about the golden opens is it really feels like oils. And sometimes I work in oils. Uh, typically if I work in oils, I have this uh, Holbane brand. It's a Japanese brand and it's actually a um, water-based oil where it actually, you actually still mix it. You don't mix it with water. I don't recommend ever using water for even if it's a water-based oil. Instead, you use this stuff it comes with. Um, I think my, the brand I use is Winston & Newton, and it's a, uh, it's a water-based oil. It's oil that can actually cut with water. And so I cut my paints with that, and I paint with that as my medium. Sometimes I add a little bit of water to it, and that's kind of like your paint thinner. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really amazing how well it works. It, so they basically um, modified oil, and they took one of the molecules out so that it can be cut with water instead of, instead of having to... So you can actually wash your brushes with just soap and water. Really cool. All right, let's go ahead and skip some of this here. Not skip, but kind of fast forward through it. So I'm just, you know, kind of laying, I'm starting to lay down a little bit of structure, keeping the shadows high of her face warm. I want the other girl to be more cool. Just slowly adding and building up. Yeah, let's actually show this part right here. So notice I'm just kind of painting right into that red I had there for the shadow. And I'm painting, uh, you know, pretty thick, so it just covers it right up. And I think I'm just going to kind of leave the impression of a nipple, maybe. But see, it's a little bit darker. because It's kind of picking up some of that under color. So you can see it's a little bit of a shadow change there. So if you look at this Rembrandt uh, self-portrait from a distance, you can see it reads really nicely. And when you get in close, you can really see, um, see I'll try to move over like that. There we go. Look at all these individual brush strokes. You can really see that, like he left some of the underpainting here and then just kind of went the edge of the brush, just dabbed a couple individual brush strokes with the edge of the brush here, right here. You can see all the individual brush strokes right here, right here. Here's a whole brush stroke right here. The whole shape right there is a brush stroke. One right here. You can even see the direction it's flowing, and you can see the fibers. You just leave these individual brush strokes on there. You don't try to blend everything out. And from a distance, it reads well. And so here, I'm actually using some more of that purple, uh, purple dioxide. I think is what it's called. Let me see if it if it's on here. This color right here, Dox, Dioxazine Purple, however that's said, that's the color right there. Really cool color. And here I'm going to show how I do this too. So notice the underpainting is, is red, but it's not a big deal. I can see the shapes that I need. So I'm making this blue color up. I can't remember what all I mixed together there. Um, always want to kind of dull your colors out though, so use opposites. So if I'm adding a little bit of blue, I'm going to add a little bit of red to it to kind of tone it down. Um, well, red actually makes it more purple. Add a little bit of uh, like yellow to tone it down. Sometimes I'll just tone it down with like burnt umber. All right, so I lay that color in there, adding a little bit of this, that purplish color now. Right, to add the shadows. I remember where the shadows were and I can kind of still see them. I'm adding a little bit of red just to kind of lighten up the color a little bit. And 
and then I, I wanted her to have a shirt on too and it's going to be blue as well so I add that blue put it just a little bit of white when you're doing clothing uh, typically you don't want to add too much like highlights because cloth doesn't catch highlights like that so you usually just do um, just a shadow color and then sometimes maybe a little bit of lighter color um, I just wanted to show like some edge color where it's kind of washed out sometimes you get that but typically to keep it looking like cloth cloth you want to really just use the base color and then like shadows and then maybe just a little little bit of change for like where the lightest part would be and so here I, I want to start getting a lot of different uh, variation in the background I don't want my back I don't want my background to just be like one tone or color so this is where I start laying down a bunch of different colors I keep my brush dirty on purpose and I just start adding different colors right slightly different variations of whatever color I'm working with so I'll warm it up a little bit tone it down um, for example if I have this kind of base color right here I'm working with whatever I came up with kind of a brownish gray color um, to change it I'll add a little bit of red to it to warm it up or a little bit of blue to it to cool it down and I'll go back and forth like that by make it a little bit warmer a little bit cooler sometimes add a little yellow to it just a couple different colors so when I start to like right here look at all these different colors I let's go ahead and watch this real quick and it really adds a nice you know cool painterly background that you'll see like oftentimes in portraits and stuff just gonna add a little bit of this white here and then I'm gonna kind of blend these together I want some of my brush strokes to show through now I'm using that purple color docs design purple whatever it's called kind of blending that in little kind of like circle motions adding a little bit more of my red back in here All right so that warms up this piece right here this little corner and I blend it right in see I don't blend I don't blend it all the way out though I leave some of my brush strokes in here I'm kind of blending this into that color this color kind of blending the colors into each other and I'm able to blend right on the canvas because they stay wet for long enough you know they don't stay wet forever so they will start to dry on you but they'll stay wet long enough for you to work on an area so I'm just kind of going getting shapes I like and different colors here I add a little bit of yellow which kind of make it look more brown and dirty and I just keep doing this right look at that see now I add a little bit of blue back into it which made it more green I'm just kind of blending all these colors around blending other colors on top until I get a nice variety of of tones and colors oops we're getting close to being done so here is where we are so far I kind of wanted something a little bit more light over here darker down here to kind of pull out the hair I don't want the hair to blend in too much to a darker color you see all that color variation I get all that color variation by that technique I was just showing there I turned it upside down just because it's easier for me to do what I was doing there I kind of want the demon to kind of almost look like he's part of the background sort of so I don't, I'm not adding a bunch he's more like a shadowy kind of demon you can see look at all these different colors you can see some green some more oranges that's how you get that you know it's just really easy to do it's not it's not complicated by just adding all these different cool colors together I'm using my knife here to blend and it was not quite working how I wanted it to so I kind of dried it off a little bit and let's go ahead and zoom in on this right here so I have the, this is still kind of like the underpainting I have a little bit of light color here and then some like burnt umber colors and now I want to change it up so she's kind of like uh, her hair is kind of making like a cat kind of so I use like a little bit of glaze that's why I blow dried it so I can do this glaze over it so I don't lose the structure but I change the tone I change the color and uh, glazing is great for that but then I'm going to use uh, right there see I glazed against why I blow dried her that's why I blow dried her face because I I thought her face looked a little bit too purplish I wanted to warm it up a little bit so to make it different than her face 
And so you can see here, um, I might use some glazing medium, which is the same medium I use instead of water to, you know, thin out my paints when I need to. A little bit of yellow, and then you just kind of glaze this over. And see, it just kind of warms everything up. So glazing is a really, really good, good technique to use. And I'll kind of paint back over the dark parts so that it doesn't look like it was glazed over. But now I got that warmer looking face. All right, so this is where we're at. So far, we're almost done. One more little clip to go through. I decided I wanted this to be more uh, bluish behind him. So I kind of went with more of a blue behind where the demon's at. And I'm going to kind of blend that out into some of the color I already, I'd already had there. Just little touch-ups here and there, add a little bit more. What I noticed when I did this, I warmed up her skin a lot here, but I kept all this quite violet. Um, so I, just like I added the tint here, I probably should have added a tint over all of this as well. I never do, um, but I should have to make it kind of more unified. There's no reason why that should be a different color of skin tone. So if you, you re, if you realize, and I can always go back and do that, right? So it's not like I, I can, you know, even though the painting has been done for, you know, for like a year now, because I recorded this like a year ago or more, I can easily go back and change that. So, you know, it's not a big deal. I can go and add a little bit of uh, a tint over it because I haven't actually put a finishing glaze over it. Um, Cause it's really not necessary because of how I paint. I actually paint, I actually paint with a glazing medium, so it already kind of adds that gloss to it, but I could put a gloss over it just to help it protect it for a longer period of time. But um, so anyway, even if you've done that, you can still go and glaze over that, but I don't recommend it. So before you, you know, you want to let your painting sit for a while before you decide to actually add that final glaze. And the reason why is because, let me kind of zoom out a little, okay, there we go. The reason why is because if you see something you want to change, you can still change it. Just kind of showing some details here. Camera and the lighting is kind of being a pain. See all those colors back here? I'll show the final painting again here in just a second. Look at all those colors. I really like how that shows through. See, I leave individual brush strokes. You can see these brush strokes in here. And I like how that looks. I could even went in with more uh, smaller brush strokes to really kind of add more detail, but I, did, I really wanted this to be more painterly or, uh, I don't know, impressionistic, even borderline abstract sometimes. So all these paintings have a meaning, but I don't like to really tell what the meaning is or what, what, what I intend the meaning to be. But all these uh, paintings in this series have a meaning. And I let the people decide what they think it means. Let's go and look at the final piece one more time here. I'm going to kind of zoom in so you can really see. So you really see all these little details. Um, Look all the different colors back here, and that's just done that technique that I talked about, where I keep changing. I leave, you know, use my dirty brush, and I keep adding little colors here and there. And as I add colors, I just keep blending them into, and I leave some, blend some together, and leave some there, and uh, you get this nice variety of colors. I never like to like even if I want a background to be like this, I don't want it to all be one solid color. So I like to, you know, paint a couple different colors into it so that it's never just all one color. All right, you can see that with the final painting, um, I did kind of warm this up a little bit, added some warms into here, but I, I think I could have, I, her legs and this just seem off to me, so I think I, I should have glazed over her torso with just a little bit of like orange yellow, and that would have made all this more unified, and I might still do that at some point before I add the final glaze over it. But yeah, so there you have it. 
And don't be in a rush to add your final glaze over unless like someone's purchasing or something. Right, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this kind of video, I have a bunch of other paintings. So uh, the more comments I get that you like this, I'll try to get one of those other ones out soon. I just have to add the commentary over them is all. All right, thanks for watching.